Baruch by giving all praises to Yahweh Bahashim, Yahweh Shari Bahashim, Rekakadash, the honors to the apostles of great millstone, peace, blessings, honors to all the brothers in the truth. This is just more evidence. You know, the evidence is overwhelming. Mystery Babylon is America. You know, um, the evidence is just overwhelming. You could see how he talks about America. And I was uh, listening to this video with him. This is on RT News. And the way he was explaining America, I was like, how can you not see that that's Mystery Babylon? You know, thinking to myself, so I'm going to let this play real quick and then just get into the scriptures. Good evening and welcome to Tucker Carlson tonight. The United States remains the most powerful country in the world. That's the good news. What's interesting is that this country has occupied that position for so long that relatively few Americans have considered what would happen if we slipped from that perch. So hold it right there. You see how he says, look, America has occupied that position as being the world's most powerful country in, in the world, you know, for a long time. Doesn't that, I mean, when the Bible is talking about Mystery Babylon, who fits that bill? Who fits the description of America? Because in order for you to be the world's most powerful country for so long, that will also make you the most greatest country on the earth. Which that's clearly what Mystery Babylon is hinting at. This is the greatest place on earth, the richest place, you know, the most powerful place on earth. So how can you not see that the two go together, you know? Let's let it play. Would it matter if America became subordinate to other nations? There's a debate about that. Let's see. At work, does it matter to you who the boss is? It probably does matter. That's the person who can fire you. And the world isn't so different from that. The top countries give the orders. The rest of the planet takes the orders, whether they like it or not. Remember that. We've lost sight of that because for more than a century, America effectively has been in charge of much of the world. Mm. And that's exactly why we have stayed rich and free for that time. Here, he, he's saying so much, so I got to break it down. Like he said, America stayed in, in charge. He said the top countries are in charge of the rest of the countries. That's the exact description that it gives of Mystery Babylon in the Bible. Being in charge, being being over the other nations. Like he said, being in power. Here, let me run it back to get exactly what he said. We've lost sight of that because for more than a century, America effectively has been in charge of much of the world. And that's exactly why we have stayed rich and free for that time. Like he said, stay rich. That's how that's the that's the description of Mystery Babylon. Being very rich and free and in charge of the world. America's not in subjection to the Vatican City. Nobody's looking at the Vatican City saying, look, the Vatican City has power. That's the greatest place on earth. They're over America. They're over Russia. They're over China. They're more powerful. The Vatican City has a military that could destroy any other military. Nobody's saying that. But they are saying those things about America, just like he just said. So it's just more proof just to show you. Let's just jump straight into it. This is Revelation chapter 17. You know, you could go through Revelation 18. We always go through that one. So I just, you know, rather go through Revelation chapter 17. There's so many videos I done made and, you know, um, other brothers that made going through Revelation 18. If you haven't got the breakdown yet. Um, this is Revelation chapter 17. It says, and there came one of the um, seven angels, which had the seven veils and talked with me, saying unto me, come hither. I will show unto thee the judgment of the great heart that sitteth upon many waters. Pretty much this chapter, the angels going, he's the angel gives the breakdown on what he's talking about through this chapter. So the angel gives the breakdown of the chapter anyways. But, you know, there's certain things like who's the great heart that sitteth upon many waters. What does that mean? Well, what it means is the great heart is America. Why is she called the great heart? Because she fornicates. She deals with so many different nations. So many. It's just like a woman um, that's dealing with so many different other men. You know, every man has his own. He's the king. He's the head of his own household. But this woman is dealing with so many different men. She's like a whore. So that's why it's calling America a great heart because it's always in somebody else's business. Always in some other nation's, um, you know, dealings. Always, you know, um, come into um, inner being in somebody else's, you know, way of life. That's why it's a great heart. And the city upon many waters, uh, that means in many different ways, you know, like the democracy or like them dwelling in different um, foreign countries elections, for example. Or like even if you take the military, literally, they're in different waters that's not theirs. You know, they all over there in the sign um, over there um, by China in the sea next to China. The, um, they all, they all over the world in the different oceans, literally 
And they, if you take their military bases, they have military bases all over the world. America has more military bases scattered throughout the world than any other nation on Earth. You see what I'm saying? And that's the same thing with ancient Rome. That's why this is Rome all over again, because ancient Rome, one of their downfalls was they spread their stuff to, um, too thin, over expansion. That was one of their downfalls. If you look at the um, how Rome fell over expansion and military expansion was one of their downfalls, which is the same thing with America. So that's why we could see these things. You know, I guess if you can't see it, then. You know, maybe the Lord then he just didn't open your eyes to see it. But to me, it's very clear. You know, to us, it's very clear. You see how he passionately talks about America being in power over other nations, being so rich, occupying that space of being the number one world's strongest power country for so long. That sounds like Mystery Babylon. It says, with whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication. See, and the inhabitants of the earth have um, been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. What does that mean? I mean, all the rest of the world is following Mystery Babylon, meaning everybody wants to follow the American way. Everybody wants to live the American dream. That's why you have so many other different nations that come to America in order to chase the American dream because they want to be free. You know, you got people from Saudi Arabia that don't don't like the um, laws, you know, the Shia, whatever the name of their laws are, that they want to come to America and be like American girls. Same thing with China. Same thing with um, Hamites, Africans. Same thing with all over there in the Middle East, you know, Mexico. They all trying to do what? Cross the border to get here to live that American dream. They trying to live the American way, which goes into democracy, you know. Um, it says, um, so he carried me away in the spirit to the wilderness and I saw a woman sit upon um, a scarlet colored beast full of names of blasphemy having seven heads and ten horns. So the um, the angel's going to break that down. But the woman that sits upon was um, scar a scarlet colored beast. That's America. I saw a woman sitting upon a scarlet colored beast because America sits upon the beast, you know. So you got America and then you have um, the NATO, which is the military um, side, and then you have the EU, um, which is the um, economy side, where there's different nations, there's different countries that all come together to make up NATO, make up the EU, but the same common theme with the NATO in the EU, guess who sits on top and makes and makes the um, shots and makes the call? America, with both of them. And then um, if you jump back here, let me jump back and get a preset real quick. I'm just going to break the chapter down, so I'm not going to get too many precepts, but I had to get this one. I had to get this one. If I could get to it. Oh, man, here, yeah. So Habakkuk 2, just like we said, look, um, verse 5, Habakkuk 2, verse 5, it says, Yeah, also, because he transgressed by wine, he is proud man. America, you know, you got American pride. They're very, very proud people. That's why a lot of nations around the world, they hate Americans when Americans come. They talk bad about Americans because Americans feel like they can do whatever they want, however they want. Neither keepeth at home. See, he didn't keep at home. He had to have, you know, you jump back in Revelation chapter 7, and it says the great heart that sitteth upon many waters. He had to go sit upon many waters. He couldn't keep at home. And even when he got America, you know, he had in the in um, Revelation chapter 17 goes into that, too. You know, the eighth one, um, he had to come over here and he couldn't keep at home. He had to come over here and take the land from the Gadites, which are um, Israelites, you know, the Native Americans. It says who enlarges his desire as hell. He didn't want a piece of America. He wanted it all. And he didn't just want America. He wanted the whole world. Because really it goes into his birthright. It goes into his blessing that he got from the father, Isaac, um, in Revel I mean in Genesis chapter twenty seven. And it says, And is as death and cannot be satisfied. He couldn't be satisfied. But gather into him all nations and heap it in him all people. So, you know, he, he took um all the Israelites into slavery and then the other nations, you know. He made it so good to the point where they got benefits and stuff for coming over to America or they got so-called freedom or the American dream they could chase by coming over to America, you know. So let's keep going back in Revelation chapter 17. It says, and the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet colors and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls 
having a golden cup in her hand. And pretty much it's just saying, like he said, like just like he said on the video, has been so rich. You know, like he said, has been, let me see if I can um, get it back. We've lost sight of that because for more than a century, America effectively has been in charge of much of the world. And that's exactly why we have stayed rich and free for that time. See, rich and free and in charge. And for you to be in charge, then that means you're going to have all the best stuff. Which Revelations chapter 18, starting at um, verse um, 11, and when it says the merchants of the earth weeping and mourning, because no man buy her merchandise anymore. Then it goes into all these different merchandise, which America trades by. It shows you, look, they had the best of all things. They were spoiled, you know? Rich. That's what um the purple scarlet color decked with gold and precious. That's what it's talking about, you know? It says, having the golden cup in her hand full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. Why? Because America is a place full of abominations. It's just that simple, and that's what it's talking about, Mystery Babylon. And it's going to tell you that verse 5. But, I mean, according to the Bible... What um, what is wickedness and what is righteousness? America is completely wicked in every single way, from its laws, from the oppression of the Israelites, you know the, how they got the land by spilling the blood, the lies, the deceit that the government tells the people, you know it's just in every single way, you know. Um, verse five it says, "Upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery Babylon the Great." Right. Now, if you go to the Hebrew numero, the um, the Hebrew, the Hebrew, sorry, let me get my words there. The Hebrew numbers for those um words, mystery Babylon the Great, it comes out the six. You have to do the math, you know. And brothers have done that. And then it says the mo mother of harlots. That goes those Hebrew um numbers for those words um equal up to six. And the abomination of earth also equals up to six, which gets you 666, which goes along with Revelation chapter 13. 666 is talking about mystery Babylon, which is America, and the man that's ruling over his kingdom, which are the Edomite, to go back to Esau. It says, and I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints. Because remember, this goes back to Esau. Remember, that was his, that was his blessing. And Jacob's blessing, which is the kingdom of heaven, comes after, you know, because Esau came out first. It says, and I saw the woman drunk with blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Yahweh Shai. And when I saw her, I wondered with great admiration, right? Because the prophets are back. And, you know, um, the prophet's blood then been spread, then been um, shed on this land, you know, and then we keep coming back. That's how it goes. You reincarnate. Reincarnation is biblical. We keep coming back. We keep coming back. Now, we'd have been on this earth many times. Now, through this last time, when salvation has come, you know, the elect is not going to taste the death. They're going to be saved. But here, I might as well jump back to prove, um, to get a precept on it. Genesis 27, which I quoted earlier, just to get the precept on it. It's Genesis chapter 27 right um verse 38 and esau said to his father has thou but one blessing my father bless me even me all me also O my father and esau lifted up his voice and wept and i said his father answered and said to him behold the dwelling should be fatness of the earth and of the dew of heaven from above so he got the heavens you know mystery babylon you know he got the most fighter jets you can look this up the most fighter jets out of any nation, America, you know, they, they rule the heirs, right? Um, the fatness of the earth, you know, they can keep it at home. You know, they, they in many different waters, you know, the fatness of the earth, you know, all, all anything good. You know, if you go to California, who lives on the most beautiful land in California, the most fruitful land in California, it's the Edomites. Who lives in the ghettos? The Israelites. You could go to any city. You go to New York, Atlanta, it's going to all be the same way. It says, and by the sword shall thou live. See, so he lived by the sword and shall um, serve thy brother. And it should come to pass when thou shalt have dominion, right? Because we was in power and then um, they um, came up out of that, you know, and um, that thou shall break his yoke from off thy neck. And Esau hated Jacob because of the blessing. And they hate us to this day because of the blessing where, where his father blessed him. And Esau said in his heart, the days of mourning for my father are at hand. Then will I slay my brother Jacob. And he still has that in his heart today to slay his brother, to slay the Israelites. 
So when you get back in verse six in Revelation chapter seventeen, it says, "And I saw, and um, and I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints." That's what it's talking about. Here, let me another precept on that. Another precept on that. Oh, man, if I could get to it. Nope, nope, nope. Turn back, turn back. Where is it? Here's another precept. This is Obadiah. Um, chapter 1, verse 9. Let's start at verse 9. And thy mighty man, O Timon, shall be dismayed. And to the end that everyone out the mount of Esau, see there, there goes talking about Esau again, may be cut off by slaughter. But why? For thy violence against thy brother Jacob, shame should cover thee, and thou shall be cut off forever. So he had that violence against us. And we all know about the transatlantic slave trade, you know, and Jim Crow laws, slavery after they so-called ended slavery. And even to this day, you see every other week there's another Israelite getting shot down in the street by a cop. People don't even understand why it's happening, but that's just all fulfillment of prophecy. So back in Revelation chapter 17, verse 7, it says, um, And the angel said unto me, Where didst thou marvel? And I will tell thee the mystery of the woman and of the beast that um, carrieth her, which hath the seven heads and ten horns, which he's going to break it down. It says, The beast that um, that thou sawest was and is not, and shall ascend out the bottomless pit. Because they came out of, um, from Europe, you know, um, with Great Britain. You know, from all over there in that area, they came from there. That's where America came from, Great Britain. You know, they fought um, for their independence. That's why we have the 4th of July, you know, um, which is a symbolization of them fighting for their independence. It's called Independence Day, right? And the thing about it is they won. They won that. And the, and the funny thing about Esau is he liked to say, you know, Ed lower level Edomites like to say, well, what good have y'all done? What, what have y'all been able to do? Y'all are a failure people, so y'all need to kind of like attach your name with being Israelites to um to get an identity because you've been failures and y'all haven't did anything. But actually, everything that makes America great has been by the way of Israelites. You know, it's just we don't get no credit. We never got credit for it. So if there was um Thomas Edison and the light bulb, his slaves came up with those ideas, but he took the credit for it, you know, these different bankers, different tools that changed the way of um, Americans lives. And then um, even with them fighting for their independence, they had to enlist the slaves into the war and put the slaves on the front line. And that helped them overcome and fight and, and win their independence. But nobody talks about that. So the only reason why they won that, why America is even a thing is because the slaves, the Israelites. But let's get back into it. It says, um, if I could figure out the bottomless pit and go into perdition and they that dwell on the earth shall wonder whose names were not written in the book of the life from the foundation of the world. When they behold the beast that was and is not and is yet and yet is. And that's talking about America in the system, you know, and, and then along with America, it's these other nations like like we said, the EU, NATO. But America sits on top of it, you know, and rules it. It says, and here is the mind which has wisdom. The seven heads are seven mountains, which are which the woman sitteth on, which is exactly what I just said. The woman, that great horror, America sitteth on these. And that makes up their power structure. It says, and there are seven kings, five are fallen and five are fallen and one is and um. The other is yet to come, and when he cometh, he must continue a short space. Even though these things are for us, it's really a short time in the Lord's eyes. It says, in the beast that was and is not, and even as the eighth that in that, let me break it down. The eighth, the eighth is talking about America. That was the beast that was and is not, and even is the eighth that came out of the seven and goeth into perdition. And the ten horns which thou saw, or ten America is mystery. Babylon had a little slip at the mind, and I forgot to mention this. Of course, the seven heads. When you're reading in um, Revelation chapter seventeen, we went over that America is the um, eighth head. America is the eighth head. And when you get back into Revelation chapter seventeen, it says, um, "I'm gonna go straight to verse." 
um, 9. It says, And here is the mind which has wisdom, the seven heads or seven mountains on which the woman sitteth. So America is that woman, right? It says, And there are seven kings, five are fallen, and one is, and the other is um, not yet come. And when he cometh, he must continue a short space, right? And that's talking about the eighth one. It says, And the beast that was and is not, even he is the eighth, see? And is of the seven and goes into perdition. This is talking about um, the power structure of Esau Edom. This is talking about Esau Edom, the white man, and their different kingdoms. You know, the, the so-called, we say so-called white, but Edomite, Caucasian kingdoms of the world. So it starts off with, of course, the Greeks. Let me hear it. Let me see if I could um, actually remember the Greeks. Then after the Greeks, you know, you, you know, with Alexander the Great, the Greek and everything like that. That was an Edomite kingdom, nation of Edomites that were in rulership. Then the Romans, then the Mites that were in rulership. Then the Romans, then the French, the Spanish, Germaner Major, Germaner Minor, and Great Britain. And then we know that great from Great Britain comes America, you know, um, with 4th of July, like we said, they fought for their Independence Day. And, you know, um, just like we said, of uh, the slaves, they had to enlist the slaves into the war in order to win that independence. So even America is only around because of really the Israelites. That's what make America great is that America has the Israelites in bondage and captivity um, pursuant to Jeremiah chapter 50. You know, the northern kingdom and southern kingdom, the house of Israel, house of Judah would come back together because we would be in captivity together under mystery Babylon, which is the eighth head. You know, it's the eighth, it's the eighth um, head and the seven heads, like we said. So um, you got the, I'll go over it again. You got the Greeks, the Roman, the French, the Sp this, um, the Spaniards, the Spanish, right? Germaner Major, Germaner Minor, and then you got um, Great Britain. And we all know from, know from Great Britain came America. So those are the seven heads, just touching up on that. Which have received no kingdom as yet, but receive uh, power as king one hour with the beast. It says, these have one mind, right? Because they work as a unit together. You know, they consult together. They take crafty counsel together and should give their power and strength to the beast. So they, all they militaries, you know, they, they call it um allies. So they have allies. So all their militaries come together and then they follow the orders of America, the ways of America. Because America sits on top of them. They shall make war with the lamb. The lamb is talking about Yahweh Shai, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. But his true name, Hebrew name, is Yahweh Shai. He's the lamb. Because he came as a sacrificial lamb the first time he came. And the lamb shall overcome them. Now, uh, matter of fact, let's not even cut no corners with it. Let's make this edifying. So they shall make war with the lamb and the lamb shall overcome them. By this, Revelation chapter 12. Verse 7, and there was a war in heaven. It's talking about the same war. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, the dragon, and uh, fought in his angels, right? Esau and his military, you know, his air force, his space force, and prevailed not. Neither was their place found anymore in heaven, meaning they didn't prevail. They were wiped out. They were destroyed. They did not get the victory. And that's the same thing he's talking about right here. Revelation 17, 14. These shall make war with the lamb, and the lamb shall overcome them. For he is the Lord of lords and the king of kings, and they that are with him are called and chosen and faithful. And that's talking about the elect that are going to be called, you know, and chosen. Because remember, many are called, but few are chosen. But they were called and they were chosen. You see what I'm saying? And faithful. And that's what that's what got them that salvation and got them elected is by being faithful, you know. It says, and he say unto me, the waters which thou saw where the horse sitteth are people, see, and multitudes and nations and tongues. Now, we could go into uh, what makes them faithful, but it's going to go back to having faith in the Lord, believing in that, um, having a name and um, keeping the law, statutes, commandments to the best of our abilities, you know, rehearsing the righteous acts of the Lord. That's what it's going to go back into. That's how we are faithful, because a lot of people say they're faithful. But they have no works, you know, James chapter two, you know, you have to have works in faith, faith in the works together, you know, and you have to be an Israelite by blood, Israelite inwardly and outwardly. <laughs> and he said unto me, the waters which thou saw 
where the heart sitteth are peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues. And the ten horns which thou saw upon the beast, these shall hate the whore. Right. Because these nations, especially these EU nations, are going to turn against Babylon. Something's going to happen where they're going to turn on Babylon. And they're going to shoot nuclear missiles onto Mystery Babylon, which is America. They're going to turn. The Lord's going to put it in their heart to turn to trade on them, to set them up. To set America up where America thinks they have allies. These are going to trade on America and destroy it. They're going to shoot nukes on over here. It says it shall make her desolate and naked and should eat her flesh and shall burn her with fire. And with that fire, how do how do one nation burn another nation with fire? I mean, there's only really one answer to that nuclear weapons. So that's how we know that nuclear weapons are biblical, because this says, look, in the ten horns, which I saw of the beast, they shall hate the horror. But it just told you what the ten horns are, kings, right? Kings and kingdoms, because a king got to have a kingdom, right? So kings and kingdoms. So how do one kingdom put fire on another kingdom? Nuclear weapons. It's the only way, not by volcanoes, not by asteroids. They have something called nuclear weapons. It says, for God has put in their hearts to fulfill his will. See, so the Lord is going to make them do this the same way he hardened Pharaoh's heart. Um, during the time of Moses, with um, time when they were in, when the Israelites were in captivity in Egypt, during the time of Exodus, so he hardened Pharaoh's heart. He's going to do the same thing with their hearts, to agree and give um to agree um to give their kingdom into the beast into the word of God shall be fulfilled. So they they gave a power. They are allies. They call themselves allies, but in reality they're under America. Cause like just like um Tucker said right here on RT News. Rule. Matter of fact, let me get it again. We've lost sight of that because for more than a century, America effectively has been in charge of much of the world. America has effectively been in charge of much of the world. Exactly. Because they gave that power up until into um, America until it says until the word of God shall be fulfilled. Then the Lord is going to also put in in a heart to destroy this place. It says in the woman which thou saw is the great city so it's not an actual woman it's the great city which reigneth over the kings of the earth which reign like what did what did tucker just say play it again orders the rest of the planet takes the orders whether they like it or not we've lost sight of that because for more than a century america effectively has been in charge of much of the world in charge verse 18 out of revelation chapter 17 and the woman which thou sawest is the great city which reign, reigneth. The same thing he said. In charge over the kings of the earth. So it makes sense and it all comes together perfectly, you know. They in charge right now because remember we read in Genesis chapter 27. That was Esau's blessing. This is his kingdom. Right? But they're going to be destroyed and then what comes after that? Well, you can read Revelation 18 and then you can go to Revelation 21. Verse one, I saw a new heaven and a new earth for the first heaven and the first earth was passed away. What first first heaven and first earth? Esau's kingdom, mystery Babylon was destroyed. That great horror, that woman, that great city, it was destroyed. It says, and there was no more sea. So there was a new heaven, a new earth, meaning there was a new rulership, was just the kingdom of heaven. And if you stay in Revelations 21 and jump down to verse 12, it says it had a wall great and high and had 12 gates and at the 12 um, and at the gates, 12 angels and the names written there on, which are the names of the 12 tribes of Israel. We know Jacob name was changed to Israel. So it's talking about the Israelites and it's talking about the promise that was given to Jacob in the Israelites, the kingdom of heaven. But Esau had his time first and Revelation 17, 18 is showing you the destruction of Esau's kingdom. And then you got the kingdom of heaven, which goes back to Genesis chapter 27, the promise that was given to Jacob and the promise that was given to Esau. Now, I know it says um, it's um, the woman which thou saw is the great city. So, you know, brain dead, brain dead niggas. I say, um, see, it says a city. So the Vatican City. No, America is a city. Now you have like Illinois is a city inside a city. America, a city is a place where there are citizens. 
So you could be a, you are a citizen. If you live in America, you know, you got citizenship. You are a citizen of America, which makes the whole entire America a great big city. Now, you could be a citizen of Illinois. I'm an Illinois citizen. But at the same time of the city of Illinois, right? But at the same time, you're also and then there's a city inside of Illinois. Illinois is a state. So then you could be like Chicago, Chicago city. So you a of Chicago, you a citizen of Chicago city of the city of Chicago. But you're a citizen of the United States too. Look at your passport, right? United States citizen. So guess what? If you're if there's a such thing as a United States citizen, that means the United States is also considered a city, but it's considered a great big city that's why if you want to move from illinois to college I'm, it's, it's so crazy that i have to go over this basic ass shit but you just have to if you want to move to illinois you can if you want to get up from illinois and you got the funds or whatever to do it and you find an apartment in california you could go move to california you could move to new york you can move to um, Atlanta. You can move to Texas because you're a citizen of the whole United States because the whole United States is a great big city. Man. But anyways, that's the breakdown of Revelations chapter 17. Just an um, overview of it. And, you know, just hopefully this has been edifying with that. I'm going to say salvation to the election.